which class should I be? is a question many new players face at the start of World of Warcraft. And this little tale shall help you decide which path you would step foot on. So come a little closer and let me tell you about the great warriors of Azeroth. Warriors are fierce plate-rearing melee fighters, which every race in World of Warcraft can be. So it does not matter if you are a small gnome or a fierce orc. Warriors can be damage dealers or tanks with three different specializations or for short specs. Every so-called spec has unique skills and abilities. And the first one for warriors is Fury Warrior and is one of the two damage specs and the fastest spec currently in the game. Fury Warriors use two two-handed weapons and rely on building rage to buff themselves and to spend it on other abilities. Fury is not only the fastest spec in the game but also one of the easier ones to play. They also have great cleave damage, which means they can hit multiple targets at once without losing single target damage capabilities. The damage profile is pretty static with some bursts in between. The second spec is Arms Warrior. Arms Warriors are the complete opposite of Fury and is the slowest spec currently in World of Warcraft, which uses only one two-handed weapon to deal damage. Arms also relies on building rage, but not like the Fury Warrior with certain abilities, you only build rage with your auto attacks. This rage, like with Fury, you spend on other abilities you have. Arms Warriors also have great double target cleave damage and a mix of some bursts and dot. Arms is not as easy as Fury Warrior, but also not really hard to play. And last but not least, Protection Warrior. The tank spec for warriors. Protection warriors, or for short just prod warriors, fight with sword and shield and resemble the classic sword and board tank type. Prods use shields and blocks as well as damage mitigations to reduce the damage they take. They excel in fights with a lot of physical damage, are pretty mobile for a tank and have great group utility. Something that is maybe important to know is that prod is the most difficult tank to play in WoW. I know this might be debatable, but with all the tanks I spoke, they thought that Prot is the most difficult to play for them. Prot warriors also generate rage and spend it on different abilities. But the front line is not for everyone. Maybe you are more interested to hear about the tales of the most skilled trackers and hunters. Hunters are swift, mostly ranged, male-rearing fighters who rely on pets and or ranged weapons like bows, guns and crossbows, but can also be played in melee with a sword or polearm. As with the warrior, hunters can be any race, so you can choose the one that resonates with you the most. Hunters can only be damage dealers and have three specs from which they can choose from and the first one is beast mastery. With beast mastery, you will use a ranged weapon and will be able to have two pets at the same time at your side to fight alongside with you, which makes this spec really new player friendly. It is also easy to play with some saying that Beast Mastery is the easiest spec of all in World of Warcraft. You are also highly mobile as a ranged DPS. The Beast Mastery spec also brings the most utility to the table from all hunter specs. Something to note is that the most damage you do is through your pets by buffing them or applying dots, which can be sometimes a little bit wonky because of not so well working pet AI sometimes. Over here! Oh, come on! But that should not be really a big impact on your damage or on your abilities to perform as a DPS. Beastmasters have great single target DPS, but poor bursts outside their big burst windows. Marksmanship Hunters are the hunter spec which is mostly or always played without a pet because you have a passive ability that buffs your damage 
by 10% if you are not using one. You also use a ranged weapon like Beast Mastery, but as the name suggests, you use ranged skills with your weapon and deadly precision to defeat your enemies. Marksmanship is also pretty easy to play, though not as mobile as Beast Mastery. But if you like heavy single target bursts and some good AoE burst, then Marksmanship Hunter is your way to go. Survival Hunters are very different when you compare it to the other two specs Hunter has. Because they use a two-handed melee weapon to fight alongside a pet. Survival Hunters are not only melee fighters, they are also a kind of hybrid melee build because they have bombs and a small crossbow at their disposal. They are great in AoE and single target and use a mixture of static damage and dots. On top of that survival hunters are relatively easy to play. But a big downside here is that they are lacking group utility which makes them not so desired in group content. If you use a ferocity pet you also have very good leech. And if you don't know where to find a ferocity pet in the description is a link for you. For everyone who does not know what leech is, leech is healing you get from the damage you are doing. Well, maybe you are more of the intellectual kind. Then let me tell you about powerful mages and spellcasters that roamed Azeroth for eons. The mage is the classic witch or wizard archetype you might know from other games. Mages wear clothes, use staff as a weapon and have three damage dealer specs which vary in the kind of magic they are using. As with the other two classes, every race in Azeroth except Tauren and High Mountain Tauren can be mages so you can choose freely what you want to pick as a race. And something that is true for all mage specialists is that they are very mobile. Mage is also the only class in the game that can create portals for themselves or for their group to major cities and other locations and they have the ability to just teleport to major cities just by themselves. The first spec is the fire mage spec and as you guessed it the spec uses fire magic. Fire mages are very good in single target and multi target damage, have great burst and execute damage. And this is also the only spec that has an execute from all those three. Fire mages are also very prog reliant, so if you have a thing for flashy buttons and maybe have a slight gambling problem, this class might be the perfect match for you. The fire mage uses mana as a resource and as I already said, plays for procs, so glowing abilities that you need to press. The next spec is arcane and uses purple arcane magic which comes pretty close to the classic wizard theme from other fantasy universes and genres. Arcane mages are unique when it comes to their mana spending because they have two phases. In one you try to conserve your mana to build up for the second phase, the burn phase or burning phase, in which you do most of your damage. With that said, arcane is one of the heaviest burst classes in the game. Arcane mages also have great funnel capabilities. A big downside to that for some players is that it is really cooldown reliant. And last but not least, Frost Mage. If you ever had the dream of being Elsa from Frozen but much deadlier, then the Frost Mage will be interesting for you. Frost Mages have great and reliable damage with strong single target and cleave damage. Frost Mages are also the masters of slows which makes them great in solo and open world content. One big downside though is that frost mages are very re very proc reliant. So if you have a heavy gambling problem then frost mage is even better than the fire mage. Well I see you might be an individual that rather wants to act instead of working themselves through year long studies. Then let me show you heroes and villains that strike from the shadows. Rogues are stealthing, swift and deadly fighters who use poisons 
as well as daggers or in some cases even swords and pistols to assassinate their targets. Something to say first is that the rogue resource system is pretty complex in comparison to maybe a warrior or a hunter and has two important components. And those components are finisher points and the energy bar. You will use your energy bar or your energy with certain skills to build for combo points which you will spend on even stronger abilities. The more combo points you have, the stronger the ability you use will be. This leads to an interesting playstyle. Something that is also pretty nice about rogues is that they are one of the few classes that are able to stealth, to go invisible, and they wear leather armor. Nearly every race can be a rogue. With exceptions on alliance side with Draenei and Lightforged Draenei and on horde side Tauren and High Mountain Tauren. But this is going to change in Dragonflight and those races will then be also playable as a rogue. So if you're watching this video and Dragonflight is already out, then forget what I said. Something that is true for all rogue specs is that they have an exceptional and phenomenal defensive capability. And rogue also has three damage dealer specs. And the first one is assassination and mainly focuses on single target damage over a long period of time with poisons and bleed dots. The assassination rogue has not only high sustained single target damage but also high multi-target sustained damage. They use two daggers as their weapons and bring great group utility to the table. One downside is that they are lacking burst, which makes sense because they are a damage over time, so dot class. The second spec is Outlaw Rogue. So if you love pirates and the pirate theme, then Outlaw is the right spec to play for you. Outlaw uses two one-hand weapons to fight as well as a pistol which appears in some abilities. Outlaw is a very well-rounded class with great cleave damage, good group utility and great survivability. Outlaw rogues are also very versatile. One important ability, for example, is Roll the Bones, which gives you a random buff. Because of that, this mechanic can be a lot of fun, but can be also pretty frustrating sometimes. The spec is one of the faster specs in World of Warcraft and has good all-round damage. The third rogue spec is Subtlety and focuses around the theme of a swift, stealthy assassin with two daggers. They have good burst damage and awesome cleave damage and some cleave situations even enhances your single target damage. Subtlety rogues have burst windows in which they deal a lot, a lot of damage, though outside of that they can appear pretty weak and their damage is rather mediocre. As with the other two specs, subtlety rogues have great survivability and great team utility. But maybe you don't want to be one with the shadows and prefer to walk in the light. Then listen to the tales of pure and holy priests, though even here we find some heroes that play their allegiance to the dark. Priests might appear a little like mages on the first glance for someone that never played WoW and has no clue about the game. They both use some kind of magic, wield staffs and wear cloth armor. Though priests don't really use normal magic in that sense, they use something that is called the light. It is still some kind of magic, but in lore perspective and also for the visuals, it's very different from, exam for example, arcane, fire or frost magic. That is also why they come with two healing specs and only one damage spec. So far, all who might want to heal and switch it up now and then when it comes to healing playstyle, then this specialization is your best choice in my opinion. Priests use resource as mana and nearly every race can be a priest, with high mountain torrent on horde and orcs as an exception to that. Though this will change in Dragonflight and you will be able to play this class with every race on Azeroth we currently have in the game. And the first spec is also our first healing spec with discipline. This spec is very unique because your healing done is through damage output. So you heal with the damage you do and you also use shields to prevent damage. Disciplined priests also have an AoE's burst heal on a very short cooldown which is very useful and in general is very bursty 
when it comes to healing while providing some good damage. To balance this accordingly, the Discipline Priest is very hard to play, so if you are looking for a challenge in healing, then Discipline Priests are the hardest healing specs in the game and are the best choice for you. The second Priest spec and the second healing spec is Holy and is a very classic healer. So if Discipline was too exotic or too hard for you, then Holy might be a great choice. They play very reactive and have a lot of abilities in their toolkit for almost every situation. Holy also has great group utility and a bursting playstyle. And now for the damage spec with the Shadow Priest. If Holy Light is not really the theme for you, but you prefer the Priest theme, then you might be interested in the Shadow Priest. Those priests do not call for the light to aid them, but for the darkness of the void. They use dark and twisted magic to curse their enemies. Shadow is dot focused with some awesome visuals to go with it. On top of that, you also have some great group utility and great single target damage. Though the AoE damage got buffed recently, so it is also pretty nice here. Shadow uses some skills to build insanity and other other abilities to spend it. And just listen to that. Not only priests call for the light to aid them in battle. Also brave and selfless knights use the holy powers of the light to protect but also to punish those who deserve it. Paladins are warriors who use sword and shield or a two-handed weapon while wearing plate armor to face their opponents. If you ever wanted to be a kind of battle mage or warrior and mage or warrior and priest mix, then paladin is your go-to. When it comes to races for paladins, you can play on alliance side humans, dwarves, draenei, lightforge draenei or dark iron dwarves. If you play on horde, your choices are even smaller with only Tauren, Zendalari Trolls and Blood Elves from which you can choose. Paladins use certain abilities to create holy power which they spend on other abilities. When it comes to specs, Paladins have one tank, one heal and one damage spec which makes them very versatile. So if you want to fill every role now and then, then Paladin is your choice. In general you can say that Paladins are pretty easy to play and the first spec is the healing spec and is called exactly like the healing spec for priests. Very creative, Blizzard. You only topped that with Shadowlands, honestly. Holy. Holy paladins wear also a sword and shield and have some really good damage capabilities and on top of that great survivability through their plate armor and certain skills. They excel in single target healing and bring some great utility to the group. The downside of holy is low mobility and low AoE healing. The second spec is protection paladin. This spec has again the same name like the protection warrior, the warrior tank spec and they also use one-handed weapons and a shield and are a jack of all trades when it comes to tanking. Prot Paladins have awesome damage mitigation and great self-heal and can also be played as a little off healer if your healer is struggling and has solid emergency cooldowns or as I call them oh shit buttons. Oh shit! On top of that they also have great group utility. The biggest downside which is also the case with Holy Paladin is the missing mobility and the best part in my opinion is the Captain America shield. Retribution Paladin is the damage spec for Paladins. And if you ever wanted to feel like a holy knight of God bringing down divine wrath and justice upon your enemies, then look no further. For like 20 seconds, but it's pretty awesome. Red Paladins use a two-handed weapon to avenge something. Please, please don't carry. 
Light demands it! And to punish everyone who doesn't play a paladin. Retribution paladins have strong single target and cleave burst damage as well as strong defensive cooldowns. On top of that they have great utility and can help by off healing teammates if the healer should struggle. As with the other two specs, red paladins suffer from low mobility and are very uptime reliant. So you only have one burst window where you do a shit ton of damage and after that it's pretty mediocre. I can see in your eyes a thirst of power, a deep wish to dominate and to enslave those around you. Then let me tell you the legends of great and power lusting warlocks. Warlocks are also a kind of mage, witch or wizard, which uses fell magic and the power of demons to fight alongside with them. Warlocks use staffs and cloth armor and can be played on alliance by humans, dwarves, gnomes, Vorgan, Void Elves, Dark Iron Dwarfs and Mecha Gnomes. And when it comes to Horde, you can play as an Orc, Undead, Troll, Blood Elf, Goblin, Nightborn or Volpera. Warlocks use mana as a resource to get soul shards which they spend on powerful abilities. The class has three damage specs in total which differ a lot from each other. You also have the ability to teleport or summon people to your location but you will need other players to do so. This makes a warlock a very great addition to raids. The first spec is affliction and it is based on dot damage which provide high single target damage as well as strong bursts during certain cooldown windows. You also have great cleave damage and you can spread your dots on multiple targets. So if you like a twisted mage that curses their enemies then affliction is your spec. Demonology is the second warlock spec in which you command a small army of demons to do your bidding. The spec has a medium rotation speed and high single target damage. Something to note here is that this spec has a ramp up time, so a building phase you could say, where you need to dot first and build your damage over a certain period of time to get to its full damage potential, which makes this spec pretty weak in short or open world fights. As the affliction spec, demonology has high burst phases in certain cooldown windows. And the third damage spec is destruction. With this spec you harness the full power of fell magic to let corrupted fire rain upon your enemies. Destruction warlocks excel in burst single target damage but also have some AoE and cleave capabilities. This spec is also very flexible to a variety of encounters. One big downside is the missing mobility destruction warlocks have. Those destructive powers can be daunting for some and if you rather preserve nature instead of burning it down or you're a furry then listen to the adventures of altruistic and wise druids. Druid is the only class with four instead of three specs. They got one healer spec one tank spec and two damage specs with one range damage dealer and a melee one. They wear a staff and leather armor. This makes druids extremely versatile and perfect for players who want to experience all aspects of the game. Druids use nature magic or shapeshift into wild animals to overcome their challenges. Druids can be played by on alliance side Vorgan, Night Elves and Kul Tiran and on horde side you can play a druid as a tauren, a high mountain tauren, trolls and zandalari trolls. And the first spec is balance druid. Balance uses sun and moon magic and a lot of damage over time to annihilate their targets. They are also a giant chicken though you can change that with a glyph. If you do not know what a glyph is or how you use them, where to buy them and such things then you can click on the right side on the video corner for more information. Balance has a very engaging rotation in which you cycle through different moon phases to deal strong single target damage. You also build astral power with certain abilities which you spend 
on others. Balance has good single target damage and also great AoE capabilities and some really useful group utility. One important thing is that Balance has a pretty long ramp up time to unpack your full potential and damage output. This also makes this spec pretty weak in short fights or sometimes also in open world content. Balance is a rather difficult spec which requires practice to get really used to it and to play it well. The second spec is Feral and is also a damage over time spec. With this specialization you transform into a saber cat to dish out tons of bleed damage in melee range. Here you need to balance two resources with energy and combo points. The resource management is very important with this spec which makes this specialization also one of the hardest to play in the game. Here you need to balance your abilities that cost energy to build combo points and you also need to decide with how much combo points you will use your other abilities. The more combo points you will spend on a, a certain ability, the stronger the ability gets. Though you have a lot of damage over time spells and abilities, Feral also comes with strong single target burst damage. The third spec is called Guardian. Guardian is the tank spec for druids and honestly I am surprised that it's not the protagonist protection druid. Anyways, if a saber cat was not your thing, then maybe a giant mighty beer fits you better. Guardian druids use rage, which they build through certain skills and abilities to spend it on others. They also have strong passive damage reduction, a large, a very large health pool. That's a lot of health and active damage mitigation. They also got great utility and excel in melee fights and or fights with a lot of physical damage. They also bring some great AoE damage to the table which makes this tank very fun to play in modes like Mythic Plus. So if you like a big sturdy sponge tank, Guardian is your tank spec. And fourth and last for druids is Restoration. Not Holy Druid, Restoration Druid. If you rather want to heal your friends instead of dishing out damage or to protect your allies, then restoration might be an interesting choice. Restoration druids use heals over time and also a mix of burst heals and excel when they heal a small group of targets over a longer time. Though they can be very punishing if played incorrectly and lack damage in comparison to other healing specs like the Discipline Priest or Holy Paladin. As a resource system, the restoration druid uses mana. Druids are not the only ones who draw their powers from nature. Mighty shamans use the forces of the elements to overcome any challenge. Shamans use the elements like fire, water, air and earth to mend their wounded allies or to wield as a weapon in combat. They wear male armor, use totems to buff or debuff, wield a one-handed weapon and a mace or dual wield one-handed weapons and have one healing spec and two damage specs. When it comes to playable races, the shaman can be played by dwarves, dark iron dwarves, draenei, kul Tyrans, and pandaren on alliance side and on horde side you can play as an orc, tauren, troll, goblin, pandaren, high mountain tauren, magar orc, zandalari troll or Ulpera. And the first spec is elemental and is a ranged damage dealer spec. Elemental shamans wear mace and shield and build towards certain points of maelstrom power which they then use on powerful abilities. Elemental excels in cleave and AoE burst damage and can also pack a punch with specific talents in single target burst. Elemental is also fairly easy to play and has a flexible playstyle. The spec tends to be outclassed in most situations and can feel niche but this can easily change through constant balance patches. The the second damage dealer spec is Enhancement and focuses on dual wielded melee combat. Enhancement shamans use two one handed axes or maces or even fist weapons that they enhance with elemental powers to fight. They also build maelstrom power but as a certain proc 
which they then can use on a single target or AOE finisher. Enhancement Shaman has strong sustained single target damage and also versatile group utility. AOE damage is rather mediocre and tends to be outclassed by other specialization in classes. Enhancement is also one of the harder specs which requires you to play focused most of the time to get the maximum out of it. The third spec is the healing spec and is called, have you guessed it? Correct, it's called restoration. No wonder that the Shadowlands story sucked so hard as it did with so much creativity. Never mind. Restro Shamans are great group and AoE healers that shine when your group is stacked together. Restro Shamans also have an AoE heal without cooldown, which makes them pretty useful in big groups. They are able to cast while moving when Spirit Walker's Grace is active and can do a good amount of damage while not losing a lot of healing output. On top of all that, they bring really helpful utility to the table. Though not everyone requires outside forces to enhance their capabilities as a fighter. Wise and battle-hardened monks are masters of their inner spirit, the chi as they call it. So lean forward and listen carefully. If you are a fan of the Eastern martial arts or you're just a weep who watches too much anime, hey! or watch too much Kung Fu Panda, then the monk is perfection for you. The monk uses a staff or bare hands to fight. Sometimes you can also use fist weapons or one-handed melee weapons. Monks wear leather armor and use a mix of chi powers and martial arts abilities to sustain in battle. They have one DPS, one tank and one healer spec and can be played by everyone on the lines except Lightforge, Draenei and Vorgan and by everyone except goblins on Horde side. The the first spec is Brewmaster and is the tank spec of a monk and uses a staff to fight. Brewmaster monks are very unique because they convert incoming damage into a debuff which functions as a damage over time effect. This dot can be then removed with other abilities to avoid the damage. They are also able to dodge damage entirely which makes them highly desired tanks. When it comes to the overall theme of the class, you are a little bit like your drunken uncle that fights on the porch, throws beer at opponents and maybe tries to fire breath them. On top of all that, they got high mobility, if not the highest mobility for a tank and uh, a class in general, as well as awesome utility and are very forgiving for doing mistakes. So this tank is pretty noob friendly and on top a lot of fun. The second spec is Mist Weaver and the healer specialization for Monk. They use the life energy of others to heal and support their group. Mist Weavers also wear a staff and use mana as a resource. Their overall theme is green smoky chi that flows in and around them and to teammates. This healing spec has by far the best sustained single target heal in the game and also phenomenal mobility. The third monk spec is called Windwalker and uses fist weapons or one-handed weapons, though most of the time you won't be using them anyways visually. Most abilities are with bare hands and the whole spec revolves around martial arts with a sprinkle of life and chi abilities. You convert energy into chi points to use the chi points you got for certain other abilities. In comparison to other classes that also use a point system to make the ability stronger, this spec is a little little bit different in the case that the abilities do not get stronger the higher points you have. You will always have the same chi cost for your abilities. Windwalker is also very mobile and is a great all-rounder spec.
Not everyone uses harmony to channel their inner strength. Some step upon a very dangerous path of twisted darkness while trapping the soul of a literal demon inside their own body to harvest their strength. Demon hunters use the power of demons to fight. So if you thought that the warlock was cool because of their demon army but you would rather be a demon yourself, then look no further. Demon hunters wear leather armor and a unique weapon, the warglaive, though can also be played with two one-handed weapons. They are melee only and are relatively easy to play in general. When it comes to race choice, you can only pick one for each faction with Night Elf on Alliance side and Blood Elf on Horde side. That is because of lore reasons which would take too much time to explain in this video. Demon Hunters only have two specs with one tank and one damage specialization. And the first one is Havoc, the damage spec. Havoc is a fast paced melee class that is rather easy to pick up with some awesome visual effects. I mean, you transform into a literal demon for some time. The whole spec is based on build and spend mechanics with some great AoE burst potential. Havoc also has decent mobility and strong survival tools. Vengeance is the tank spec for demon hunters and is based on the same theme of demon powers. For a tank, the Vengeance Demon Hunter has great AoE burst damage and is the tank with the highest mobility in all of World of Warcraft. Even though active damage mitigation is lacking, the Vengeance spec has great self-healing capabilities. So if you're looking for a fast-paced AoE bursting tank, then the Vengeance Demon Hunter is your choice. Though not only masters of the powers of demons roam Azeroth, far in the north reside cold warriors of death and decay. Warriors who harness the powers of death reanimation as well as cold and twisted ice magic. The Death Knights are hated and also feared in all of Azeroth. Aww, oh, how cute. Kill. Death Knights are undead plate-wearing melee fighters who use either one two-handed weapon or two one-handed weapons in addition to necromancy, blood magic, or frost magic. Death Knights, or for short DKs, have two damage specs and one tank spec and can be played by every race in game. So channel your inner 12 year old depressed child and let's take a look on the specs. Blood Decay is the tank spec and focuses on self healing and crowd control. You are using a two handed weapon as well as blood magic to sustain and to conquer your enemies. The blood spec also has some great utility and is fairly easy to play. When it comes to the resource management, you will have runes which you spend to build runic power, which you are then able to spend on a very strong self-healing ability which also does some good damage. The second spec is unholy and focuses on necromancy and death magic to overrun their enemies. They also wear one two-handed sword and are highly resistant to downtimes. Unholy has great single target burst as well as good AoE burst. They use undead minions and have one of the longest cooldown ability with army of the dead which has an 8 minute cooldown. Though this ability is long, it looks awesome and does some great damage. When it comes to the resource management, you will also have runes that you spend for runic power, which you can then spend on stronger abilities. The third spec is Frost and focuses on frost magic in melee ranged combat with two one-handed weapons or one two-handed weapon. You can choose that, there are different builds for that. Frost decays have high burst and cleave damage and they use runes as well as runic power which they need to manage correctly to not suffer from downtime and damage loss. As well as with the other two specs you have some abilities which cost runes to build runic power which you then can spend for even stronger abilities. Well. That was everything I can tell you about the known heroes of Azeroth. But I heard a rumor, whispers in the wind, about a new kind of fighter, a swift and cunning dragon, 
that travels through the sky. Did you ever thought to yourself while fighting big bulky dragons, I wish I would be that dragon, not killing it? No? Then fuck off, everyone wants to be one. And that is why Blizzard decided to create exactly that. A playable dragon race class, which is called the Evoker. The Evoker uses the power of dragon magic and dragon abilities like breathing fire or flying or flying to combust the their enemies. As with Demon Hunter, Evoker has only two specs, one healing and one damage spec. The Evoker class is not out yet, which depends on when you are watching this video and will release with the newest expansion at the time. Dragonflight. As Evoker, you can only be an Drakthir, which is a new race, and vice versa. So no Dragon Volpera furries, thankfully. Evoker uses staffs and wear male armor. With the Evoker, you will be able to cancel your cast time at any given moment to release the spell you're currently pressing. The longer you are casting, the more damage the ability will do. This is a new mechanic which will release for the Evoker class. Both specs have essences which fill over time, a little bit like the runes from Death Knight, and are spendable on strong abilities, though you will also have fillers in the meantime while fighting. The first spec is Devastation, and as the name suggests, is the damage dealing spec. Here you are using abilities based of two different dragon flights, blue and red. To make it short and simple, the different dragon flights are kinda different dragon races with different magical abilities, which are all combined in this one class. With Devastation, you can choose between red AoE fire-like abilities and white bluish ice abilities that focus on single target and cleave damage. The healing spec is called Preservation and focuses on the green and bronze dragon flight. Preservation Evoker have a lot of healing over time and are able to rewind time to set the health of a player back to an earlier moment. Preservation has some good AoE and single target healing and has a very unique but easy playstyle. A lot for Evoker can change until the release, so take this class and this information with a grain of salt. And that is all I can tell you about the champions of Azeroth. I am interested which path you will take. If you want to learn more about a certain spec or class and want to go even further in depth with it, I advise you to go on icyveins.com, the link is in the description, or on Wowhead, link is also in the description. And I hope now you got the class you want to play, even maybe the spec, or you at least narrowed down what you want to play. I also want to thank my little brother who helped me record a lot of the video clips you saw in the video because I I do not play every class in this game, so thank you a lot. With all that said, I'm happy to be back on YouTube. I like you whoever you are. I hope that you are happy because that is the most important thing. And if you are not, I promise you it will get better. Much love to you. I wish you all an awesome day and leb wohl. Evoker.